fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One, two, let's go, big fella. Pedro Camargo had quit Mexico only a few jumps ahead of pursuing government soldiers. Eventually, he made his way to Tombstone, reputed to be the most lawless town in the West. There one night, as he lounged in a cafe contemplating his bleak future... He felt a hand pressed hard into his shoulder. Well, look who I find here, of all the places in the world. Pedro Camargo. Quiet. Do not say my name so loud. You mean to tell me you're running away up here too, Pedro? Uh, Senor, you make a mistake. You call me... Who do you think you're fooling, Pedro? You know me. Vinco, that's who I am. Vinco Shane. I have never seen you before, Senor. I have... Oh, he was not a lawman after all. Huh? What are you talking about? That hombre who stood there at the end of the bar. The way he keeps looking at me, I think surely he's a lawman. But now he is gone, and I am released. <laughs> oh, bingo, amigo. It's good to see you. Well, that's more like it. This is real luck bumping into you, Pedro. Luck for Pedro? <laughs> oh, Vinco, you are my amigo, and always you have treated me good. Well, let me treat you now. What are you drinking? Right now I sip slow on a glass of wine because I cannot afford more. You want some red eye? <laughs> oh, Vinco, such a thing to ask a man who loves red eye. <laughs> of course I will have some. Barky, pour my pal here a double shot. Then, Pedro, when you get it, we'll sit over at a corner table and talk where we can't be heard. Now, oh, Vinco, this is a good tasting thing. Well, I'm going to give you something better. Here, a gold piece for you. Not bad. This is for me. Oh, but of course, of course it is for me. What's the matter with you? What are you groaning about? Because, Vinko, whenever you give me money, it is for something bad you want me to do. Then always trouble pursues me, like the law. There'll be no trouble this time, Pedro. You're just the man I need to do a certain job for us. And who, Migo, are the people you call up? You ever hear of Coy Harper? Coy Harper? Who has not heard of that hombre? Tuffy is in a great gambler. 
But more than that, he is a smart one. Never does the law catch up with him, no matter what he does. Yeah, that's coy, all right. Plays his hand to get the full strength out of it. But he never makes an overplay. So you work for him now? Yeah, Duke and I are his right-hand men. We cut in on all the jobs we do for him. He's holding a big stake for us now. <laughs> so that is why the gold and red eye run free. Yeah. And we have another job set up that we want you to help us on. Uh-huh. A bank job. No. no, 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 no. Not for me, a bank job. I steal a sheep, a cow, or maybe a horse. Sometimes I kill an hombre I don't like. Hold it. But... Hold it. You don't like lawmen, do you? Lawmen in Mexico and this country, I do not like them at all. Good. Because in this bank job, Duke and I do the hold-up part. We just want you to get a certain lawman out of town while we work. And if I say I do not want to join in this job? Back you go to Sonora where they want you for murder. Where they'll hang you from a tree. I'll make sure you go back. You know, Finkel, I work for you. But tell me first, where is this town you're talking about? It's west of here. A real live town it is, too. You've heard about it. It's Bolverado. The town of Bolverado, half a day's ride west of Tombstone, was fast becoming as lawless as Tombstone itself. A new kingdom of crime was in the making, and it was for this reason that the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed for Bolverado to help bring law there. It was evening when the two men set up camp in the hills outside the town. We'll get in touch with Sheriff Denton in the morning, Tonto. We helped him once in the past. Perhaps we may be able to do so again. Uh, him, good man. Not afraid of crook or outlaw. But he can't get deputies, so he's doing a one-man job. That's too great a task for even the bravest man. Uh, Kimasabe, you have ID who had outlaws in town? No, Tonto. But Coy Harper set up hotels and cafes there. His reputation's the worst. I think he's the man we'll keep our eyes on. <laughs> At that moment, in his suite of rooms in a hotel he owned, Coy Harper met with outlaws Vink O'Shea and Duke Foster. No one saw you sneak up here, Miguel? We made sure of that, didn't we, Duke? Yeah. We made sure Sheriff Denton was the other side of town. Denton, huh? He's been causing me a lot of trouble lately. I hope nothing goes wrong tomorrow morning. Don't worry, Coy. Duke and I will take over him from the two people who work in his bank before he knows what happens. And he'll never recognize us in different clothes and wearing masks like we'll be. And as for leading Sheriff Denton into the ambush you've set up, believe me, Pedro will do a perfect job. You'll see. I hope so. Because with Bill Denton gone, we'll not have to worry about law in this town anymore. We'll run things the way we like. The way I like. <laughs> Shortly after dawn next morning, Sheriff Bill Denton heard a knock on his front door. He walked to the door and opened it. A Mexican, visibly upset, stood in the doorway, hat in hand. Oh, Senor Sheriff, he's good you are here. Please, you must give assistance quick. What are you talking about? Give whom assistance? Where? No, Senor Sheriff, it is the bandidos. Bandits? Where? Uh, Senor Sheriff, up in the hills I have a cabin. In the cabin I have gold, which I find in the earth. Come last night, the bandidos. They break into my cabin, Senor Sheriff. They eat my food and drink my wine. Next, they say they will take my gold. Bandits broke in on you and they didn't take your gold right away? Ah, that is right, Senor Sheriff. Now they sleep. I sneak out here and come to you. Please, you must give assistance quick before they wake. Take my gold and escape. Well, that's my job. Wait till I get my gun. Now, what's your name? Pedro. Pedro Manuel Camargo. My cabin she's to the west in the hills where I show you. Strange, I never saw you around, Bolverado. Oh, but, Senor Sheriff, I never come to town. This town is bad. I stay near my cabin always and search for gold. Well, let's get out of here, then. Look into this matter. Lead the way. I'll have my horse ready in a minute. A few minutes later, as Pedro Camargo and Sheriff Denton galloped out of town... Coy Harper, peering from behind the window curtain of his hotel room, chuckled. 
So long, Sheriff Denton. This is the last time I'll see you riding like that, huh? <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto finished breakfast and left their camp. The sun had been up for more than an hour as they brought their horses to the edge of a deep incline and gazed toward the east where the town of Boverado lay. Town look peaceful, Kimasabi. Proving how deceiving appearances are. Towns like Boverado go to sleep at dawn, don't really wake until... Kimasabi, look. Down below behind Big Rock near Rogue. Yes, I see them, Tonto. Five men, Kimasabi, on horses. Them act like hold-up men. Wait till I look through my binoculars. Tonto, they have bandanas across their faces. They are bandits. And then get ready to ride, Kimasabi. There are two horsemen coming along the road. Ah. The sun's causing something on his shirt front to gleam as if... Tonto, a Sheriff Denton, he's heading for an ambush. Let's get down there quick. Come silver! Get him up! Oh. Sheriff Bill Denton, riding with Pedro Camargo, felt uneasy and slightly suspicious of his companion. As they neared the massive boulder called Bald Head Rock, oh, Denton easy, slowed uh, his horse. Easy, easy, Pedro easy. followed suit. Senor Sheriff, something is the matter. That's what I was just wondering. Camargo, where exactly is this cabin of yours? Well, not far, Senor Sheriff. In the hills away. We go around Big Rock, then turn up on trail that go there. Senor... Why, you look like that. Two men riding down from the hills. Are they your bandits? Well, that may be, senor. That I cannot tell from here. I do not think they are, senor sheriff. A white horse like that, I did not see one ride. <laughs> oh, oh, must see. Oh, what's wrong? The there? crooks waiting in ambush had seen the two horsemen riding down toward them. To avoid an encounter, the crooks galloped their horses onto the road and headed toward Denton and their pal Pedro. Musty, what had... Oh, the bandits, you knew they were coming. Pedro, this means a fight. Get your gun out. Over here, Musty. Stop, Senor. Come on, now. Get off the road. I say stop or I shoot. No! The shot from the oncoming crooks whizzed by Sheriff Denton, who was riding for cover. It was Pedro's shot that crashed into his shoulder and sent him hurtling to the ground. Denton, as he fell, saw Pedro riding down on him, ready to fire again. I get you good now. But Denton's gun went off first. Pedro tumbled from his horse as his crook pals galloped onto the spot. The crooks fired as they approached, and one of their bullets hit Sheriff Denton. But two found their target in Pedro. The Lone Ranger and Tonto shots were getting nearer, and the fleeing crooks, with no time to turn and fight, fired wildly over their shoulders. All right, scatter, boys. We took care of the sheriff. Those numbers behind us, shoot two girls. Let's go. Scatter, meet them behind us. Oh, I'm hit. They got me. The crooks separated and rode off the road into the brush as one of their men fell to the ground, hit by a shot from the Lone Ranger. Seconds later, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode up, stopping where the bandit lay. Oh, 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 oh. Otto, the other four are riding in different directions. It'll be useless to follow them now. You must look after the sheriff and his friend first. Ah, uh, Tim We'll make this crook tell us who his pals are if he doesn't. Don't shoot to... me! You can't shoot me when I'm down like this! You shot me already! Otto, take care of this fellow. You know what to do. Ah, uh, me know what to do, Tim uh, Me take care of him good. Come on, boy. Tonto dismounted and walked toward the wounded crook, who lay on the ground wide-eyed with fear at the thought of torturous death by an Indian. The Lone Ranger rode back to where Sheriff Denton and Pedro Camargo lay, their shirts wet with blood. Who's it? Who is it? Sheriff, are you conscious? Yeah. You, the masked man. Don't try to talk yet. I'll bandage your wounds and do what I can for you and your friend. That coyote's no friend. You shot me. He led me... Never in. mind. Tell me later. I'll still look after him. But first, let me help you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. The Lone Ranger stopped the flow of blood and treated Sheriff Denton's wounds, as Toto did the same for the wounded crook. Pedro, who felt that life was ebbing from him, began to plead. Oh, senor in the mask, do not let me die. I'm not ready to die. Please do not let me. Sheriff, you say this man shot you? He led me into the ambush with a fake plea for help. Then when we arrived this time... Senor, please. Senor Sheriff, I, I did not want to do these things. They made me. They said that if I did not do what they tell me, I will die. So you'll die anyway. No, no. Oh, do not say that. Senor de Mask, it seemed like you were a good one, an amigo to the sheriff. See? The sheriff is not dead. He's alive. It's not your doings that I'm alive. Save me, please. I tell you why I do this, then. I tell you about the bank robbery that take place while you were here. Bank robbery? Who's robbing what bank? Oh, see the way the blood flows. Help me, and I'll tell you all. Start talking, Pedro. I'll help you, all right. Sheriff, let me pull you over here and listen to this. I think I may be able to stand up. Don't try. Let me get your arms. Now. There. Pedro, you better tell us nothing but the truth. It was evident to the Lone Ranger that Pedro Camargo's wounds, while painful, were not too dangerous. But he allowed the fear of death to act as oil for the tongue of the man. And soon Pedro had told how he had been drawn into the plot. He ended. And so, senors, his hombre vincoche. Tell me if I do not do like he say. He sent me back to Sonora where they hanged me to a tree for stealing sheep. And so I do it. Because I am afraid. And he promised you that you'd have a job for life at Coy Harper's ranch if you led Sheriff Denton to the ambush. That is what he say. But he's fear more than reward that make me do like he tell me. Filthy snake, you should hang. Coy Harper and Vinco Shea. That combination adds up. There is the other hombre they call Duke. He do tell me all this. That would be Duke Foster. He and Shea were run out of the panhandle together. But the bank, if they hold up the bank... What time is it open? Pedro says that's the hour they'll enter the place and hold it up. It opens at 10 o'clock. I swear I tell the truth. It's at that hour they say that the safe is open. It's not 9 o'clock yet. There's time to get there before they do the job. Oh, my side hurts too much to ride. You're able to hold a gun, aren't you, Sheriff? Yes, it's my left shoulder inside. I'll I... reload your gun. You can hold these two men prisoners. Otto and I are going to Boverado. But that mask, they'll think you're one of the bank robbers when they see you. I'll take that chance. He was probably... Carry other crook over here. How is he, Toto? Well, him hit bad, but me fix him good. Him not die. Is he conscious? No, no. Me put him on the ground next to other crook. Sheriff, that'll make your job of guarding them easier. It sure will. I'll take care of him all right. When Toto and I arrive in Boverado, I'll have him send men out here at once. And have him send a wire to Tombstone, the United States Marshal. Bank robbery comes under his jurisdiction. I know you'll do whatever you plan. But you better hurry. Easy, steady, Silver. Don't worry, Sheriff. Silver and Scout will get us there before 10 o'clock. You ready, Tonto? Uh, be ready, Kimasabi. Monsilver! Monsilver, who? Easy, steady, big fella. No fella. Easy. Well, here we are, Tonto. With at least 20 minutes to spare. Uh uh-huh. Look down Main Street, Kimasabi. You see only one man? Yes. And he doesn't see us. I told you this is a town that doesn't wake up until noon. That bank building opposite hotel. Yes, I, I see it. There's a path that runs along the rear of all the buildings there, including the bank. We'll ride that way. Come on, Scout. Come, Scout. Come, Papa. The Lone Ranger and Toto walked their horses along the deserted back path until they were opposite the rear entrance to the bank. Who's in the room? Oh, easy, easy, Scout, easy. There are windows in the rear of the building, Tonto, and there are no bars on them. Oh, you go there now, see how bank room looks? Yes. Meanwhile, you go to the telegraph office and send a message to Marshal Gray in Tombstone. Tell him Sheriff Denton has been shot, that he's needed to hear. Then have her, whoever's in charge of the telegraph office, send a doctor and some men out to where we left Sheriff Denton and his prisoners. The tell him send men to help you, Kimasabi? No, not yet. Pedro may have lied. There may be no hold-up plan at all. We're here only in case one does take place. And if it does, I think we'll be able to handle it. Return in a hurry, Tunnel. Did you send a message? Ah. And we 
have man get doctor and posse to join sheriff. You see inside, Kimasabi? Yes. There's only one room in the bank. And the safe is in the rear. I was barely able to see it through the window. Almost time for bank to open, Kimasabi. Yes, in about three minutes. I've already seen three persons enter by the side door. And work there? Yes, I saw them getting books and records ready as I looked through the window. Kimasabi, back! Topple grabbed the masked man's arm and pulled him back into the underbrush where their horses were tied. Look, two men on horses right between buildings. Yes, they're dismounting by the side door. Ah. Now them put bandanas on the face. They have their guns out. And go slow upstairs to door. See? And one of them knock at door. I wonder if... No. They're answering the knock. The door's opening. Come on, Toto. It's a hole up, all right. Ah. As the two crooks with guns drawn pushed into the bank, the Lone Ranger and Toto ran alongside of the building. Then they ran up the steps and quietly made their way to the open door. Inside the bank building, Dewey Hibbs, the white-faced bank president, backed up against the wall with his two quaking employees. Think O'Shea did the talking for the gun-wielding bandits. You, mister, you take those money bags from the safe and tone them over here. Move, Bruno! Uh, don't, don't shoot. I'll get the money for you. We'll shoot the kill if the others make a sound and go near their front door. Stay closed till we finish here. Hurry along with that money, you. Uh, here's one sack. What's in this one? Gold? Whatever it is, you're going to use it. Who said they call a mess, man? Oh, my wrist! Oh, I'm shot! You dirty coyote! Don't make me shoot again, Vinko. Oh. Mr. Hibbs, have your men pick up those guns from the floor. Oh, you right. stand back! Heard He's shooting! Yeah, I'm standing back! I'm hurt! See? Don't, don't do any more! You'll break yeah. the other arm! Now stand against the wall. You, Vinko. You, Duke. Yeah, 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 sure. Here, have the guns. Aren't you hold up men, too? No, Mr. Hibbs. You're the president of this bank? Uh, yes. Then go out and get all the citizens in town that you can trust. Uh, Have them bring their guns here in case some of the partners of those two try to start trouble. Think of. Hey, how do you know who I am? I haven't removed my bandana yet. But neither have I. He called me by my name. I think someone double-crossed you. Oh, uh, Mr. Head, before you go. Well, what is it? If you see Coy Harper around, tell him to come over here, will you? Coy Harper? Think of, did you hear that? Yeah. Hibbs, wait a second. Mask man, did Coy put you up to this? <laughs> what do you think? You see, Vinko, why, that double cross are no good. This was a frame up. Yeah, trying to get us out of the way. So we wouldn't get our cut on the other jobs he put us up to. Coy Harper did? Yeah. Well, he's crazy if he thinks sending us to jail will make us keep quiet. We'll tell all the jobs we did. Tell where he keeps the loot hidden. You do that. Mr. Hibbs, you've heard all this? Yes. So have my employees. That's right, and we'll testify to it. You've uh, coin plan this hold up, not us. Was he the one who had Pedro lead Sheriff Detman to ambush? I don't think so. You did that, Vinko. Yeah, yeah, but it was Coy's idea. It was... But, Masked Man, if you're in with Coy, why are you siding in with Hibbs and these people? You've done all the guessing so far, Vinko. Do some more about that. Go on, Mr. Hibbs. Tell your friends what's happened, and also the things you've heard. Tell them to get guns. That's just what I'm going to do. We'll get guns. And before we return here, we'll go first to Coy Harper's hotel. Today was the last straw. Harper's overplayed himself. A short time later, a vigilante committee headed by Dewey Hibbs stood outside the hotel where Coy Harper lived. Shots were fired through his window, and men on the inside banged on his door in high temper. Harper! We know you're in there. We want you. If you don't want to be shot down, give up now. Your game is finished, Harper. Do you surrender? Oh, stop it, stop it. Don't shoot. Don't shoot anymore. I surrender. I give up. All right, men, hold your fire. Go down and tell Hibbs and his men to hold their fire, too. All right, I'll do it. All right, Coy Harper. Open that door and come out with your hands up. That's all right, here I am. Don't shoot, though. We'll not shoot. You'll be handed over to the law. <laughs> what, what's this all about? You know. I'll start moving. Early that afternoon, when Sheriff Denton was brought back to town with his prisoners, he found Harper, Vinko, and Duke in cells. He talked with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, then shortly after, propped in a chair, he talked to the men who had rallied around him. Men, 
Everything's under control. That's right. right. The hangers on in Harper's place are leaving town as if old Nick were after. Yes, I saw that. I deputized men to go after the four crooks who escaped when they ambushed me. The crook who was shot told me where their hideout was. It seems to me they're all anxious to talk. Pedro, Vinco, Duke, and the other one. Trying to save their own hides, that's why. Because they're cowards like all crooks are. Why, Harper's lost his hold on his town now. He's lost more than that, including his freedom. He may end up losing his life on the gallows. We'll have a good town now, a clean town. Yeah, yeah, right. On right. And we have to thank one man for it. The man who appeared just when I and the town needed him most. You mean that masked man? Yes, he's something. We know all about what he did. Yes. And after he did it and set everything right for us, he and his Indian friend disappeared. Sheriff. You seem to know him. Yes, I know him as well as any man in the West. But only for the good he does. No man ever gets to know him personally. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 